what are we gonna say? No. I mean, if we think it's a good show, we're gonna do it. You know. And so we like we we put out the content, and it just it just resonated with a large group of people, and Zeus continued to really scale and grow, and so it's it's doing really well. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, that I've been. They have they have definitely called and reached out. They've sent cease and desist letters. Um, they have threatened like wow. certain things. Like yeah, it's, I've talked to the highest level at Viacom. Um, you know, uh, I've I've heard that there's been people in the team that's like been saying, "What you said it? Yeah, just take them down, take them down now. Take them down and take them down now." What do you mean by that? Mean by I think they were just like you know they were saying like when there was a wheat basically. Look, we feel like they're they are a threat. Mm -hmm. They're and they're coming after our our they're our, treading in our space. They're treading. They call it their oh, yeah. space. It's not really? their space. Their talent. It's their talent. Like their they own. Talent. Like it's like it's like oh, yeah. it's like. I don't want to say. Look, they're my like my. <laughs> I'm not gonna. That's a nice I'm, way to put it. it it's like, <laughs> no. I understand how the business works, right? Which is why I launched my network. I I kind of I didn't in, intend to be a disruptor. I'm cool with being an extender, not a disruptor. So for me, it was more so like, I'm gonna launch a platform. If people wanna, you know, work with me, collaborate. Cool, let's do it. I'm all about it. And VH1 wants to collaborate, partner, NBC, whoever. I like, you know, let's 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 make some things happen. Um, and that's still my mentality. Uh, you know, so for me, when they were saying that, it was like, I think they just felt really threatened. Like, yeah, you're working with our you're 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 working with our talent that we basically own or have <laughs> wow. exclusive rights to, which I don't. I'm not familiar with their deals. Yeah. I don't have their deals, right? So we do our due diligence. So if people are coming to me and saying they're free to do certain business, mm -hmm. I'm gonna embrace it. So you know, you can't come after me. You got to go after them. Yeah. It's not my mm -hmm. issue. So if they're so in well, breach, if they're in breach, that's them. I, I'm not in breach. I don't have a deal with Viacom, right? I don't have a deal with these networks. So for me, it's it's not what they called at the time torturous interference. None of that stuff exists. So mm -hmm. for me, it's just it's it's torturous interference, which is what they called it. And for me, it was just like it, it was it was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. But uh, you know, I just kept moving forward. I haven't heard from them since. But you know, so I did, did was Jocelyn Jocelyn? Oh yeah, the they saw jo no Jocelyn had been free for. <clears throat> I feel like the industry devalues a lot of people when when you need them you need them for just a moment then you chew them up and spit them out and they don't work wow. with you and so i i i said look I, jocelyn's a free agent right now uh -huh. right she's not doing any other projects <clears throat> she's not working with anybody so yeah i'm a green light a show with her she's great you know uh this person is going around pitching shows trying to get a show off the ground i'm gonna educate you on how it works and say hey let's rock let's work together so for me i'm i'm taking a completely different approach they're making it difficult for people to have projects wow. or to have like most most of the talent have no ownership in the shows. Mm -hmm. They don't get executive producer credits. They don't have creative control. You know, they're just on screen. They do a job for X amount of time and then they're done. Right. right? And, and the sad thing is you don't really realize how much money these people are making. Right. Wow. The, the networks oh, make yeah. they're making. I mean, their budgets every year are hundreds of millions of dollars. Wow. Right. To, to produce original content hundreds of millions of dollars so the comcast of the world right the the comcast the at&t's the, or the, the the what we call the uh, cable and satellite providers direct tv dish they pay these networks right so they pay the vh1s they pay all these guys to carry their network so that's their first revenue stream and then they make money off of advertisers right they don't share in any of those fees with the talent and even the production companies so they generate all of that revenue, right? Whether they're profitable or not, that's not our business. They're making all that money, right? And so you don't see a piece of it. But what you're doing, in my opinion, when I look at a talent, when I look at somebody that's very creative, I see value in it. And I see like, okay, look, I'm not gonna screw you over. I'm not gonna just give you a talent fee and say, thanks. I'm gonna say, hey, let's share in the, let's share in the profit. Let's share in the revenue. Let's, let's really give you the proper credits that you deserve. Let's really make some things happen. And so it's no secrets for me. I'm very transparent and candid with our business. Like it's, and that's why people work with us. They don't do that with traditional networks. They're traditional. I'm non-traditional. So I think people are, are excited to work with me and Zeus because they're not only getting, uh, you know, uh, ed, ed, they're not only getting ed, educated, but they're getting opportunities that they would never get anywhere else. The exposure, yeah. right? And so for me, that's important. I see value. Let's take Michael. You're, you're bringing all this. Ex so think about the logic in it, right? 
Yeah. If you're a talent and you're creative and you're, and you're generating all these eyeballs for people to watch a specific show, that's, that's the bottom line, right? That's how they make their money, right? right? Mm -hmm. It's all about viewership, right? So if you're the person or if you're on an ensemble cast, right, and you're, and you're bringing those eyeballs, why shouldn't you be a part of that? You know what I mean? And so for me, I, I don't, that, it, that just didn't sit well with me. It was, very, it was a very unsettling feeling. And so I just said, I want to I wanna change that. I want to change the, the process. I want to change, you know, uh, how people are used to doing things out here in Hollywood. And I really want to put the power in the hands of the content creators and, you know, the talent. And, and, and we collaborate and we call you actually partners. That's and amazing. we talk. So, yeah. Man, this so. guy is a... Nicest man in the world. Yeah, that's good. That, especially <laughs> partnership. Oh, that's good. Give this I mean, what do you, I mean, yeah, Daryl, I mean, I want no. Listen, I want I want Daryl to chime in too. Just give your but thoughts. But it happens about, to a lot of the the, yeah. the black talent. They, it, oh, they, black talent just, gets it even worse. Yeah, right. But go ahead, D. I mean, I mean, I've been a talent manager, you know, 10, 15 years, and from my perspective, anytime you can allow a talent to capture more of the value in the marketplace, is a better. It, it, it works. Like, you know these networks are paying you pennies and then, you know, connection on your, your efforts, right? Because they're not accessing, you know, the, the um, talking put the oh, microphone sorry. Advertise, here, oh, sorry. Mike, so yeah. people can hear us in Nigeria. They're not, yeah, right. They're not, you're not accessing the advertisement, the uh, product placement, any other ancillary revenues that's coming in, you're just getting a check. You know, and what he did was brilliant. You, you, you made them micro equity partners in their projects, right? And you, you let them, you know, live along um, I mean, make money along the life cycle, the full life cycle of the intellectual wow. property, which is just brilliant. So for me, any talent manager or talent in, with, with any type of understanding of um, the entertainment business should be clamoring to get to Zeus and figuring out ways to create projects, you know, so they can have equity in their stuff, you know. And that's, to me, that's just, that's what really makes this thing special, like putting that power back into the artist's um, hand. Wow, yeah. Zeus Network, everyone, everyone, unsubscribe yeah. Netflix, yes. Amazon Prime, and I know they have. I know you Zeus. guys have place to go. I want to talk a little bit about Hollywood. I'm yes. getting a feeling like Hollywood is like dying down. What do you? Yeah. What's your feel on Hollywood? You know, it's definitely changing. It's going through a major transition period. I think uh, you know, music, television, film. I mean, we're seeing it before our eyes. You know, um, I think it. From my opinion, when it comes to television and movies, I, he could probably speak more so to mu the music business. Um, and can I get another refill? <laughs> Turn up. <laughs> we're talking about Hollywood. Um, but but for me, it's like, you know, we're in a different day and age, right? It's, uh, it's a lot that I can say about this, but I'll try to be as quick as, quick as I can. But I'll say it started with, like, Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. Netflix was a platform that disrupted everything. I would say two things, social media in Netflix and Pornhub, right. they did <laughs> and Pornhub. That's fine. So, sure, sure. <laughs> uh, but but I'll say thank you. I'll say as far as uh, uh, Netflix, right? Let's start with them. They had this philosophy. It was all about convenience, choice, and control, right? They're a twenty-plus-year-old business. People don't really realize that they've been around for twenty-plus years, wow. right? And so their model was all about how do we make it convenient for customers, where they can choose whatever they want at their control. And so that was their kind of like philosophy, right? And so they did it. They started mailing DVDs when you had to go and get in the car, start your car, drive to a place, look mm -hmm. around, then drive back home, then bring it back. Blockbuster w was very successful. Yeah. Netflix said, go to our website, sign up, we'll mail you the DVD, right? You don't even have to get up. Oh. So, so, that. so they were mailing you DVDs. That was the first. And that the was, fees. Yeah. <laughs> and then they had your credit card on file. So if you chose to keep the, the, the DVD, yeah, they, they just money. take your money, but nobody ever reads the privacy policies and things like that. Yeah. So you're just like, whatever. Right. So, so they did that and they were successful and ultimately they grew. And then as technology evolved and advanced, they were on computers and you can go on your web, you know, whatever device you had. And then ultimately where people Hollywood started recognizing Netflix was when, you know, they started putting out original programming. It was House of Cards and it was Orange is the New Black. Dexter. That it, well, I don't know if Dexter was That's Dexter. That was that was an effort. But it was House of Cards and, and it was House of Cards and, uh, and Orange is the New Black. And Orange is the New Black. Mm -hmm. And so what happened was 
they disrupt like they finally announced how many subscribers they had and it was like 35 million subscribers right wow. paying like eight dollars and that was like 280 million dollars a month so when netflix reported that hollywood was like okay and then they reported that you know you can watch these shows on our platform you know it was like and then they changed the game because it was like the shows look just as good if not better than an hbo type of series mm -hmm. right it was very premium and you had an a-list talent kevin spacey and all these other people in these shows and then they changed it where they were like go binge watch it go watch all 10 twin 12 episodes right and so everybody hollywood was kind of scratching his head like hold on wait what just happened right yeah. right and then people started going and then it was it was word of mouth and people so so netflix continued to evolve right now they have almost 200 million subscribers wow right right now they're bringing in billions of dollars a month in revenue and so they have a ton of original programming that they're creating so they can keep and hold their subscribers and ultimately scale it. So that model changed the game for Hollywood. So that meant that people were less interested in going to the movies. They were less mm -hmm. interested in watching traditional television because of that business model. And then you had on the other side, social media, right? You had all these influencers because technology evolved where they can mm -hmm. shoot on their, everything is on this phone, right? You, you have, is an editing software program on here. Is a camera and you have distribution. A camera on my phone? You have distribution, you have editing, you have distribution, editing, and you have production, right? Oh. So on, on this one device. So as this started to evolve and the platform was available, it just it you know, it, it took eyeballs off of traditional, you know, Hollywood ways of how you watch content. So the first choice, right, that people choose nowadays of how to watch content is on their phone. They'll go to Instagram, yeah. they'll go to all these different social platforms. That'll be the first place they watch. The second option would be any type of what we call VOD service, video on demand. So that yeah. whether that's AVOD, TVOD, or SVOD, advertising video on demand, that's like a YouTube. TVOD is more transactional video on demand. And then SVOD is like Netflix subscription based. So that's like the number two option. And then third was like cable TV. Fourth is like movies. And we see in front of our eyes, when is the last time you really go to a movie theater, right? Nobody goes to the movies like they used to, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And so it's almost becoming like this nostalgic kind of thing, mm -hmm. right? Right now it's, oh, wow, the, mu the movies, right? And so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is what it is, but that's the day and age we live in. And now you have platforms like OnlyFans and just, yeah. again, eyeballs are going in all these different places now where people can watch content. So, yes, Hollywood is changing significantly because of technology, because of the new platforms that are emerging and that are here and because of how people can watch content. I don't know if you have anything you want to. No, I think you said it. I, I think it's the greatest time in entertainment history. It's so many media outlets and so many ways to go directly to the consumer. So you don't need gatekeepers or intermediaries or, or middlemen, mm -hmm. you know, to get to your audience or to build your audience, audience base. And there's 15 million ways to monetize once you build your audience base. So to me, I think it's a great time in media. Music and television. In music and television, right? Yep. You, this is a time where artists can own their art, exploit their art on their terms, right? And get fair value for it. So I think it's great. What's up, Marasokas? This is your African king of comedy, Michael Blackson. Stop what you are doing right now and go find the Mother Sucker Podcast with me, Michael Blackson, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe. It's free. So go do it right now. And don't forget to catch a new episode every Tuesday.